What's going on everyone? Happy Friday once again to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues. It is time now for the Friday afternoon edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, January 19th, 2024. If you did not see, we did do a morning Pandemic Update that was dedicated to Long COVID. There was the Long COVID hearing yesterday, and Long COVID, my friends, it needs more attention. We're going to be giving it more attention. The more we see stuff on Long COVID, the more we are going to talk about Long COVID. All right, if you're new to my channel, Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below, and I hope to help keep you safe. Maybe you're someone that's concerned about the pandemic, dealing with the pandemic. Maybe you did not know that it is still a thing or that other viruses are an issue. I'm here to tell you about that. All right, we have new data today on the JN.1 variant, and we also do have some news stories, and we have new numbers out of California. So let's get right into it, shall we? First off, for this tennis writer Mike Dixon dies in Melbourne while covering the Australian Open. He was only 59 years old. So yeah, this is not good. I'm not seeing what his cause of death was. We will be talking about another death in a moment as well. All right, what is invasive group A strep? Well, deadly flesh-eating infection hits record numbers in Ontario and Canada. So Ontario and Canada is seeing a record number of Strep. Last year, Canada logged record-breaking numbers of deadly variety of Group A strep, a bacterial infection capable of killing roughly 1 in 10 people impacted and is one of the most common causes of flesh-eating disease. Tell the story. Yikes, that's not good. Let's read a little more. The Public Health Agency of Canada confirmed that the National Microbiology Laboratory received more than 4,600 samples of bacteria in 2023, the highest annual total on record. Yikes, that's not good. The public health notes the Providence recorded 222 confirmed cases in December 2023, more than any other month on record since 2014 and 2015 season. Yikes, that is not good. Moving on to this, Tom Shells, Pulitzer winning TV critic of fine-tuned wit, dies at 79. The cause was complications from COVID and retinal failure, said his caretaker. Yikes, that is not good at all. The cause is COVID. I mean, yet again, I'm telling you, COVID, it is still a big issue. We put the GIF on these videos every day, or the Mimi, I should say, of the pandemic is not over. It's really not over. It's just causing all kinds of things to happen. California, this is ridiculous. We keep talking about this. I'm talking about it again today. California health officials shorten COVID isolation period to just, no, not five days, not three weeks, just one day. You test positive. You rest for one day. That's good. You can come out of isolation now. You're one day's up. Oh, it's so annoying being isolated at home. Yeah, well, when you're really sick uh, and contagious, and shedding virus, you need to isolate more than one day. I always say, when you have COVID, please rest as much as you can. If you are given the time off to rest or have the ability to do so, do it. The less rest you get during a case of COVID, the higher the risk is you will go on to develop long COVID. And one day, that's promoting and giving long COVID the fighting chance to become a reality for you. That is just not good. All right, we're going to take a look at air qualities. You're going to see a mixed bag of things. What I'm learning is because of the snow that's falling in the east, yes, it's snowing here today. It's actually a pretty day outside. It looks like a winter wonderland outside here. But because of the snow, I think it's messing up some of these readings. You can see it's coming in with bad air quality in the mid-Atlantic. I don't know if that's actually true. The west coast, this is true. It's fireplace season. So that's, I think, why we're seeing the bad air qualities in the mid-Atlantic region. All right, we have new data from the CDC today. First off, let's take a look at some of this wastewater data. And you can see, actually, some good news. 80 to 100%, which is the highest level of uh, COVID. Those numbers of sites actually dropped by 14% to 500. Moderate rose a little bit, though. That 60 to 79%, that orange, that's uh, 429. That's up by 7%. And what we like to see is... The smaller colors, the lower colors, we like to see those numbers increase because that means if they're increasing, well, then the numbers of higher 
would be decreasing. And we are seeing this medium shade here, this light blue, 40 to 59 percent. That increased a little bit. And that's a product because the number of dark red sites are going down. But as you can see here, there's still a lot of work to be done. It's going to be many more weeks, if not over a month, until we get these levels a lot lower. Remember last summer, we didn't even have, I think at one point, there was like one or two red sites. Yeah, maybe at some point we can get back to that at the beginning of summer before, you know, there'll probably be another wave this summer, or at some point this year, there is definitely going to be another wave. It's just a question of when and what variant. Speaking of variants, we're going to be looking at the JM.1 in just a moment. You can see wastewater activity. Yes, it continues to be high in many places. Let me refresh this. Yeah, it continues to be very high in many places. Walgreens this week. Taking a look at Walgreens, we know that the national positivity rate is 27.5%. All right, some more CDC data. Deaths continue to increase in much of the East and a good majority of the country. California even now. Uh, actually, deaths in California, according to this, actually dropped ever so slightly. But then you come to Colorado. 21% increase in deaths. You can see here, wow, Iowa, 51% increase. Minnesota, 40% increase. Yeah, that's not good. Illinois, you know where Chicago is, 14.3% increase. How about New York State? Up 4.2% for deaths this week. Continuing on now, we see here some good colors here. Green are good colors here, but there are still two places where... Uh, Epidemic status for COVID is still likely growing. District of Columbia and Mississippi. It's likely declining in many states. It's stable or uncertain in a lot of states as well. And some states are even in declining where it is just really dropping. Pennsylvania, Illinois, New Mexico, New York, Minnesota, North Dakota, Washington. You're all declining faster now, so that's good. And it's especially good to start to see the West Coast dropping. Because remember, they did not have as big of a wave uh, during the winter, sure, during the holidays, as the East Coast did, which, again, COVID throws curveballs. We don't understand why some things happen sometimes. Remember Delta variant back in 2021? Delta really went bonkers in the South. Then eventually it came to the North, but it didn't do as much as it did in the South. The South was just really bad. And at the time, the blame was, oh, it was the pandemic of the unvaccinated. We all know that breakthrough cases became real as time went on. All right, emergency department visits and emissions. They are dropping. Emissions are down by 9.6% this week to 32,861. Moving on to this. Drum roll, please. Here is the new estimate for JN.1. Remember we said JN.1 is likely going to clear the board? It is doing just that. JN.1 is now 85.7% of all cases. It is dominant by far. HV.1 is now down to 5.3%. Yeah, JN.1 is really flexing its muscles here. You can see how it has just rapidly gone up from November, then to December, to where we are now here in the middle of January. 85.7%. And, it I mean, it is practically, yeah, it's, it's clearing the board here. You can see a lot of these little variants that were something, 0.1%. And the only ones that you have that are 1% is HK.3 at 1.5%, JG.3, BA 2.86, JD.1, and then comes that HV.1 variant. All right, moving on. Philadelphia today, 773 EMS incidents reported on Thursday. Live look in. It's not terribly busy. The one thing we would expect to see a lot of would be accidents because, again, it's snowing here. We're having a snow day. And you can see here, there are a few respiratory emergency calls. And yes, head injury, subject in pain, vehicle accident, fall victim. You would expect that fracture. You expect that when it's snowing. Taking a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania. And we do see one, two, three sick person calls right now. That's never a good thing. And let's just do a look and see what's going on in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Yep, quite a few calls. But like I say, we cannot see what the calls are for. They just put medical emergency or transfer. New Jersey today, 1,210 hospitalizations, 61 people on a ventilator, in the ICU 175, and their discharges are 243. 67 out of 70 hospitals reported. Three did not report, so the number would probably be a little bit higher, but not all that much higher. When we zoom in here, we clearly see New Jersey at this point. They're, they've peaked. They are dropping. New York State is dropping, but it's slower for the cases than the hospitalizations. 4,168 cases, but when we take a look at this chart here, you can see it clear as day. New York State cases, 
there you go you can see it's actually now the drop it's actually a little bit faster now and just because there's a couple days that are up it's not meaning much because overall they are down new york state hospitalizations 2858 that number continues to steadily drop at this time all right texas texas did update this week their cases are still going up i'm thinking this will be the last week for that but we'll just have to wait and see. 19,301, which is 584 higher than last week's 18,717. Uh, fatalities are going up. That's going to continue to go up. 60 versus 46. That works out to 14 higher. Hospitalizations, they're down. 1,799, which is 151 lower than the previous week of 1,950. Chicago, updated this week. 34 hospitalizations. That is down. Hospital beds in use, though, is up ever so slightly. Emergency department visits is down. Laboratory confirmed cases, 214. That's down. Deaths are up ever so slightly, and vaccinations are down. All right, skipping over now. Let's take a look at California. Here we go. California, new hospital admissions in the past week are down by 12.9%. COVID-19 deaths, they're saying here it is actually down a little bit. So that is a good thing. COVID-19 test. The positivity rate is 10.9%, though it is down a little bit. Looks like the average is up ever. It, it, there's a little bit of an up indicator here. So I don't know what that's about, but it's saying it's down 0.6%, working out to 10.9%. Influenza hospital admissions, 1,014 new ones in the past week. Influenza deaths due to uh, influenza, 0.9%. And the test positivity rate for influenza is 11% in California. That is down 2.1 percent all right drum roll please let's see if we have any update out of la hopefully la updated and nope the most recent update is on the 11th it's supposed to update on thursdays yesterday was thursday and they did not update all right finally today taking a look at influenza we only have one state now that is at the highest shade which is purple and that is tennessee however we still have some places that are very high which would be south carolina Louisiana, and New Mexico, which are still coming in at very high. Puerto Rico, we haven't mentioned you in a while. Puerto Rico is at low levels for influenza at this time. That's not the lowest category. It's just a step above minimal, but they're at low levels. California, still at high. Pennsylvania is at moderate. Uh, New York City, New York City is also still at very high levels. And we can see here, when we come down and take a look at Georgia, and Alabama still very high, but just a lower shade. And also, Wyoming is very high as well. Then we have a lot of places that are at moderate to near high. Again, the south likely has peaked for influenza, but transmission of it is still going to be high for the next couple weeks. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. That's right, we did two pandemic updates. Uh, we did a second one just before this, which was all dedicated to long COVID. So if you have not seen that, it's the video before this one. In fact, I'm going to leave a link down below. I would like to put something here in the credits, but one of these days I'll figure out how to do that. And I will leave a link to it in this video down below so you can go see that because it is very important that we do something to treat long COVID because we need better available treatments and we need answers. We don't need me out there telling you, well, long COVID can do this, can do that. You know what it can do. There, Some of you out there are suffering with it. Now we need better treatments for it. Okay? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, share these videos with anyone who needs them. Stay safe and have a fantastic Friday evening. And if you're getting snow, make the best of it. Enjoy it if you like it. And if not, warmer weather is coming soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.